Hello everybody, welcome to Baiju's 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and I welcome you to this particular video where we are going to summarize the chapter components of food in just under 30 minutes. So in this particular video, I will be summarizing the entire chapter which deals with concepts of nutrients, which deals with concepts of deficiency diseases and of course what are the functions of nutrients and the tests. So I hope that all of you are excited for this video. If you are, please grab your textbooks and notebooks so that side by side you can mark the important pointers as we discuss. Now in case if you are looking for an in-depth chapter explanation, the one shot link to that particular video is there in the description so you can go click that for an in-depth chapter explanation. But today our intent is to make sure that all of you are able to quickly revise this chapter as your examinations are approaching soon. So without wasting any more time students, we'll get started. So as you can see, the chapter name here is components of food. Now when we talk about food, right, we are often told that by our parents only, that don't eat junk food, you know, things like chips, pizza or, uh, you know, or even chocolates in some cases, as a matter of fact, they tell us that it's very bad for us and we shouldn't eat it regularly. But for some reason, our heart always goes out to eating, you know, maybe a little bit of masaledar chips that is there. But often our parents tell us don't eat all of that but instead eat ghar ka khana where the, whatever we make at home is nutritious, it is healthy. But why are we told to eat our food? What is there in food that you know everybody is obsessing about that we need to eat three times a day, eat it properly on time. So why is food so important? Well, whenever I talk about food, I always tell one thing. Food is the fuel that drives our body. So just like how car needs petrol, we need food. Otherwise, we will not be able to survive. Because from the food that we eat, right, we get a lot of energy to carry out various activities. You imagine if you didn't eat lunch and you went to the playground during your PT period, you'll be feeling so tired, right? You will not have the energy to run around and play your favorite sport. Now at the same time, Whenever, especially in this age that we are in, we are, our body is growing, our body is developing. So if we eat the right kind of food and healthy food, we see that it also has a very important role to play with growth and development of the body. Now, along with that, we also see that at times, let's say when we fall down or when, if at all we get hurt ourselves, at after a few days or a few weeks, we tend to heal ourselves, right? That scar, that scratch that was there before is no longer there now. So if you see that the way we healed ourselves or the way we repaired ourselves also is, you know, is something that happens with the help of food. Now you must be thinking how exactly? I will tell you in some time. Now repair is not just exterior but repair is interior also. So within our body also various repair mechanisms or various ways in which they repair themselves, all of that happens inside our body and for all this we need food. So what is food exactly? So you can say that food that is there is nothing but, just give me a moment, food that is there is nothing but a substance or it's something that we eat and it has certain components that help us get energy, that helps with growth and development and for repair. So what are these components that are prepared, seen in food? Now, if you see, there are a total of seven components, right? So we have carbohydrates. So let me quickly write this down. And you can let me know the components as you watch this video, right? So we have carbohydrates, we have proteins, we have fats, we have vitamins, yes. Then we have minerals. And last, then of course, we have water. And of course, we have dietary fiber. Now, these are the components that are there in our food. Now, in these components, we call these five as nutrients. But we don't call water and dietary fiber as nutrients. So, let's first understand what are nutrients. Then go on to why we don't call these two as nutrients. 
Now, if I were to talk about nutrients, nutrients can be defined as substances from which we get energy We are, or these are components that help or provide us with energy, help us in growth, can maintaining our body and helping us with development as well. So if you see the carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamin, minerals are all essential for maintaining our body, right? Now, on the other hand, if you see, we have water. Now, when I talk about water, water, as I said, is not a nutrient. That means it doesn't really contribute for getting energy or it does not really directly contrib contribute towards growth or, main, or, you know, functioning. But water is necessary to absorb all these nutrients by our body and different parts of our body in, has water as a constituent or it is made of water. So we see that water is needed by us because various parts of our body is also made of water which is why we see that water here is very very important. Then of course we have dietary fiber. Now like I said dietary fiber that is there is also known as roughage. And if you see dietary fiber again does not really contribute in getting giving us energy. We don't get we are not you know there's no growth contribution per se. But if you look at dietary fiber, they add volume or bulk to our feces, right? And thereby what happens, it ensures that there is smooth functioning of our digestive system so that we are able to, you know, work it. Please don't mind. So we see that the dietary fiber that is there add, adds bulk or volume to the feces. So now that we've had an idea of what are nutrients um, and what are the components which are not really considered to be nutrients, let's move on to understanding more about these nutrients. Now, if you see, we see that nutrients can be broadly categorized into macronutrients and micronutrients. Now, macronutrients are those nutrients which are needed in a larger amount. That means in our food, these macronutrients should be there in large amounts. For example, carbohydrates, fats and proteins. While vitamins and minerals, on the other hand, are only needed in small quantities, which is why we call it as micronutrients. So let's go and look at each nutrient one by one. Now, first up, we have carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates are basically those nutrients which give us instant energy. Now, what do I mean by instant energy? It means that as soon as we consume carbohydrates, they are utilized immediately by the body so that we get energy. So, rice, wheat, potato, bread, these are all sources from which when you eat it, you get instant energy or the body utilizes it very efficiently. While on the other hand, if you look at fats, right, we see that fats that are there, although we think that fats are very bad for us, fats are pretty essential. And as a matter of fact, they act or they give us reserve energy. Yes, they give us reserve energy. Now, what do I mean by reserve energy? It means that these particular nutrients, when fats enter into our body, they don't directly utilize it. It gets stored first or it gets utilized for various other process. But the energy from the fat is not directly taken. But let's say in our body, we haven't eaten, let's say for four, five hours, right? For some time we have not eaten or for a long time we have not eaten. But in such cases, it's not that and we need carbohydrates or we're running low on energy. So in such cases, what will happen? It will not be like our body will wait till carbohydrates come in but rather it will have a reservoir of energy, right? So it will have the stored energy kept so that in such cases, when let's say we don't have enough carbohydrates to get the instant energy, they will use these fats. So if you see peanut, uh, you know, ghee, butter, you know, various nuts that are there, they are all very rich sources of fat. So now I hope you know and understand the difference between carbohydrates and fats. Now, the third nutrient that we have here are the proteins. Now, before I go to that, here's a quick fun fact for all of you. Now, if you've looked at camels, right, we see that camels have these big humps on their back. Actually, in their case, they actually store their fat. This is because you know that Camels, of course, they are found in the deserts and sometimes food might not be available in surplus. So in such case, whenever there is not enough carbohydrates in the body or if they need stored energy, they go to the fats for the same. So this is a fun fact for all of you to know. So with this, we will move on to our third nutrient, which are the proteins.
now proteins that are there are mainly responsible for the growth and repair of the body and we often call proteins as the building blocks of our body right we call them as the building blocks which means that most of our body is made up of proteins or major components are made up of proteins so milk eggs paneer these are all some examples from where we get proteins now it's important that when we cook proteins we are very careful because if you heat it excessively or you know we don't cook the proteins right sometimes the proteins can get damaged and that goes even for vitamins and minerals as well cooking them well is very important otherwise they can get damaged or they will lose their nutritional value so with this we've understood that these are the three major macronutrients but how do we know that rice has carbohydrates in them or <coughs> or i will find proteins in eggs so how do we know this so let's understand so there are various tests that will help us identify this now the first test that we do is to test for carbohydrates and here we do a very simple test called as a iodine test now in this what do we do we use the iodine solution which is a brownish color solution right it's a brownish color solution we take few drops of iodine and we add it to rice now what happens is that wherever i have added the iodine and i observe a color change wherein it becomes blue black that means that starch is present now how have i arrived or how did i say that this is possible that is because a chemical reaction takes place here where starch is a chemical itself right will react with iodine and it will form a complex right think of it as a complex chemical compound now this starch iodine complex that is there will have a blue black color which is why and this and we see that it will happen only when starch and iodine react which is why in this particular case we say that if if on adding iodine it becomes blue black that means that starch is present and it is rich in carbohydrate now are starches and carbohydrate different no starch is a type of carbohydrate yes so please understand that next up we have the fat test which is nothing which is done with the help of a translucent paper or a butter paper we see that in this case when you take butter and you take let's say a butter paper or a thin paper and you smear it a little we see that this particular spot becomes translucent which means that this particular food source is rich in fat so if you normally seen right when let's say we take a newspaper itself and mama makes bhaji you know a lot of pakoras at home so when she takes it from the deep fryer and she keeps it on the paper you see that the space wherein it the paper has come in contact with the pakoras has now become little translucent right which is why in this case if there is a translucent spot that means fats are present now next up we will have a look at the protein test the protein test is also known as the biuret test now for the biuret test we require two components we require caustic soda solution and copper sulfate solution now in this particular case let's say we take a sample of protein it could be protein powder or maybe we could take some green grams make a paste out of it and then make a diluted solution both works but let's say we take protein solution right and in this protein solution let's add two drops of caustic so um copper sulfate solution plus 10 drops of caustic soda solution now when we add this right so two drops here 10 drops here and we mix it we observe a color change now copper sulfate is blue in color right but when copper sulfate caustic soda and protein comes together we observe that there is a color change to violet now if it becomes purplish or violet in color it means that in that particular sample proteins are present and this particular test is also known as the biuret test so these are some chemical reactions or some chemical tests through which we can identify if a particular food item has let's say proteins or carbohydrates So with this we will move on to the next topic which is vitamins. Now when we talk about vitamins we see that both vitamins and minerals are needed only in small quantities and we see that vitamins are needed for maintaining our overall health.
So we see that there are various kinds of vitamins in our body. Broadly, we can categorize them as fat soluble vitamins and water soluble. Now, fat soluble vitamins are mainly vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. While water soluble mainly include all the different types of vitamin B, B complex, and then of course we have vitamin C. Now, when we talk about vitamin C, right, vitamin C is extremely important because it helps in maintaining our immune system or make sure that our defense system of our body works effectively and also helps in healing wounds and repairing our body. While if we look at vitamin D, right, vitamin D is necessary for again ensuring that the calcium that we get uh, is deposited in our bones and it makes our teeth stronger as well and along with this it helps in the mineralization of the teeth and bones because if you see in our teeth and bones we have a lot of calcium and phosphorus that make it very strong which is why we see that vitamin d is also essential for the same now along with this we also have vitamin a now vitamin a is necessary for maintaining good vision of our making sure that our vision is good so that even in let's say dimly lit places we are able to see clearly now let us move on to the next subtopic which is minerals now minerals that are there are inorganic elements that are required in small quantities and again they are essential for maintaining good health and proper body function now if you look at it quick reminder that there are other components right so we see that there are various other components as we discussed earlier that is roughage and water so to remind you that roughage again helps in getting rid of undigested food water helps in the absorption of uh, nutrients and removal of waste these are the sources from which where we can get roughage and water now, if you look at it in all these cases, both all the nutrients that we saw, whether it is our macronutrients or our micronutrients or let it be our other components, we see that we need all of them in a right proportion or in a right manner. And we see that a meal that has the proper proportion of all the nutrients, right, so that it can provide sufficient amount of nutrients to the body, we call it as a balanced diet. And an individual who does not eat a balanced diet or does not eat or does not have certain nutrients present in his diet for a long period of time can develop a deficiency of that nutrient and we call this as a deficiency disease. Now normally if you see it can happen due to the deficiency of any of the nutrient. Let's say if carbohydrates and fats are not present the body becomes very weak, you know there is severe hair fall and skin also becomes very dry. Now understand, now understand that it is not that there is a lack of nutrient for one day or two days. But we are talking about the prolonged absence of a nutrient from the diet for quite some time. So this is the consequence of, what do you say, this is the consequence of lack of carbohydrates and fats in the diet. Similarly, if there's not enough proteins in the diet, it can lead to discoloration of hair, in some cases diarrhea and stunted growth. Now, of course, again, mainly it also goes for vitamin deficiency. So like I said, vitamin A is essential for giving us good vision. And if there is an absence or a deficiency of vitamin A, then it can cause a condition called as night blindness, where the individual will not be able to see clearly in dimly lit spaces. Then, of course, if vitamin B is absent from the diet, we see that it can cause a condition called as beriberi, which affects the muscles of our body. Now we know vitamin C is effective in healing wounds of our body and of course ensures that our gums and teeth are kept healthy. But if vitamin C is absent, it results in a condition called a scurvy, wherein we see that our immune system gets affected and there is bleeding in the gums. So that is a characteristic of the same. Now last of course we have the vitamin D deficiency wherein we know that vitamin D is effective for keeping our bones and teeth healthy but if there is an absence or deficiency of vitamin D it can cause rickets and rickets is a condition that we observe in children where the bones become soft and they become bent as you see in the image here. 
So with the students, if you see, we come to the end of today's class where we have revised the entire chapter components of food. Now this right here is a very easy chapter. It's very direct. And when you are studying deficiency diseases or function of nutrients, make a table and study so that it becomes easy for you. So I hope that all of you enjoyed this particular class. If you did, don't forget to let me know in the comments and hoping to see you all very soon again. Up until then, take care, lots of love and bye-bye.